All right, time to bring in our panel of wisdom on this Wednesday. In one corner, Labor MP Joel Fitzgibbon, and in the other corner, businesswoman and litigator Carolyn De Russo. Welcome to you both. Hi, Chris. Good evening, team. Now, I'm interested to know from you, Joel, whether kids in the Hunter Valley should be taught how to protest against some of these mines and coal-fired power stations in your electorate. Oh, come on, Chris. This is, this is surely a G-up. Uh, this can't be real. And I, I took a big risk a fortnight ago on this program. I made a prediction. Uh, I was proven right. And I'm going to take uh, a dangerous punt again. Uh, this will not happen, Chris. This idea that nation and states are going to make this commitment to teach kids to protest as part of their nationally, de nationally determined contributions to Paris uh, is just a joke. It, it won't happen. It can't happen. I have no problem uh, with lessons in the school on the environment, but that happens now, of course, as long as they are balanced. But the idea of teaching our kids to protest against the government, which we hope might be reflecting the majority view of the community, uh, is just crazy. Well, at least the Prime Minister has been forewarned today, so that's important when he goes over to Glasgow virtually or however it will run. Carolyn, it's not the first time the United Nations have decided to create a new world order and, uh, you know, they love to think that they're the, you know, they're, in, they're the government in charge of all the governments, don't they? Yeah, they do, and they, they tend to be quite forceful about these things and, um, you know, that... that Look, they're excellent at, at gaslighting individual states into what is and what isn't appropriate to do. Ultimately, these things, though, um, come down to what is appropriate for Australia. And that's, as the Prime Minister often says, that's for us to decide what's best for our country. And quite frankly, when you look at it from an education point of view, um, the best thing that we can teach our kids is to... Um, teach them how to think and not what to think, yeah. teach them to be resilient, teach them numeracy, teach them literacy, and then after that they can make up their own minds. And if they wanted to, if they want to go into green entrepreneurship, then they can. But the business has to come first and then the green comes second. Yes, and ultimately, on. if we teach our kids those things, then they will go on into the world to be able to make a difference. And we want, we want to see you know, um, less pollution. We want to see a, a cleaner planet and all of those things. But that does not start with teaching kids what to think, because all that creates is foot soldiers. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't create inspiration for a generation to make things different of, of their own initiative. You should go along with the Prime Minister or with the environmental team over to Glasgow and make those points. Probs not important. a good idea. Very Chris. salient. Federal Independent MP Zali Stegall was out and about today. Uh, driving home this very dark view of how Australia Day should be held, the minute silence. Here's what she had to say. There's also a lot of non-Indigenous Australians and Indigenous Australians would like to pay their respects and acknowledge the loss and sorrow felt and the price paid by First Australians for the Australia that we are today. Uh, we mark a minute's silence when it comes to Remembrance Day and Anzac Day, and I think it's fitting that we do so on Australia Day as well. Joel... Do you back Zali Steggall's call for a minute's silence on Australia Day? Should I risk another prediction, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Zali Steggall will be a once uh, yeah. in that electorate. I'm, I'm sure the northern beaches have grown more progressive in recent years. Tony Abbott found that out the hard way at the last election. But surely this is not, does not reflect uh, the views and aspirations of the people who live uh, in that electorate, um, unless she changes her ways and gets a better sense of what her electorate is thinking, she's going to struggle. And no, I disagree with her. Australia Day is about uniting us, uh, not dividing us. People Correct. can find their own ways of paying respects to those who uh, lost their lives around that period of time. But we're not going to have a united country if we're going to use our national day to drive the wedge in uh, on issues there, you know, for which there are other ways to deal. Yeah, she should stop hanging around all those uh, barristers and lawyers uh, cooped up in Phillips Street and start dealing with those on the northern beaches who I'm telling you now will look at what she's been saying over the past 24 hours and decide that's the last time you get my, my vote. I absolutely agree. This is, she, this is her death knell. Carolyn, we've got Indigenous ceremonies, we've got smoking ceremonies, we've got... 
in every capital city, you can go to these ceremonies and show respect. They are awesome. They are fabulous. This is the way to recognise their role in not only pre-white man, but also the way black and white have worked together to create a fabulous nation. And that's, that's exactly right, Chris. And I, and I don't see why we, we can't just celebrate. Just, you know, we, we can celebrate our, our modern culture, we can celebrate our Indigenous culture, we can celebrate all the various, you know, groups of people that have, that have come to Australia you know, is, is since since settlement, and and I don't see why we need to pick a political fight about this. And ultimately, we have got much bigger issues to deal with, both in relation to the Indigenous community and more broadly. I just do not see the sense in picking a political fight over something like this, after, particularly after the last 12 months, what people have been through with the bushfires and pandemics and losing livelihoods and being stuck in lockdown. I just don't see that the electorate, as, as a broad as a broad whole, really has the patience for this sort of thing at the moment. Yeah, that's true, it's true. OK, now... Chris, I'm can going... I just quickly say Please. something more on that? I obviously haven't had a chance to consult Indigenous leaders today on this issue, but I did, uh, at the time when the NRL made that silly decision to drop the national anthem uh, at the State of Origin Games, and that wasn't supported by the Indigenous leaders I spoke to. Now, Indigenous people are like... Uh, the rest of us, no, they don't all think the same, but they too want to unite, not divide, and they want to move on, as Carolyn said, to the real issues, to the disadvantage that continues to flow from the mistakes that were made all those years ago. Yeah.